Hello, good afternoon. The headlines from BBC Look North this Tuesday lunchtime. Insurance companies are accused of pushing up premiums because of potential flooding in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. I've got Kingswood in, in Hull North, which is growing now. Houses are being built and the government's but if encouraging the government people to buy. change that in to include new build properties, wouldn't make that make it incredibly expensive for everyone who has to contribute? Well, the government are in a bit of a bind here because they, they obviously are saying you shouldn't be building on uh, areas that are likely to flood. But of course, as I've just said, Hull is an area that's 95% below sea level. A cull of 6,000 ducks is to take place at a farm in East Yorkshire following an outbreak of bird flu. This could be an issue to do with migratory bird patterns but also within those people on small holdings and those people who keep domestic birds on a very small scale. Well, what would you have done differently then? I think the big area we need more done on is the area of the wild bird population, monitoring and evaluating that to make sure that we don't see more incidents. Our Sarah Walton is at Coningsby at the moment, has been following the Prince on his uh, visit. Didn't go all quite to plan, did it? No, not quite, Peter. The Duke of Cambridge was meant to go up as a passenger on the Dakota from the Battle of Britain Memorial flight, but uh, it wasn't working. It's an old plane. So we had to go up in a much smaller plane, a two-seater chipmunk. But what that did mean is that the Duke himself got to have a go at the controls, and he flew in formation with a Spitfire for about 20 minutes above the base here. And when he came back into land, I could hear him chatting to the other pilots, and he said it was a remarkable experience. For more than a century, the lighthouse on Spurn Point has marked the entrance to the Humber, but the biting wind and rough seas have taken their toll. Tidal flooding a few years ago means the lighthouse can only be reached by foot or with some adventurous driving. Every piece of material has to be brought out three miles from the mainland on a truck like this, on a track that changes every day with the tide. And as you can see, it's not the smoothest of journeys. So this is one of the shelters that's been adapted. All the dirt and rubble that had built up has been cleaned out and the airflow improved. Metal grill to keep out unwanted intruders and new roosting places inside mean that if you're a bat, this is no home sweet home. So Ian, have we got any bats using the shelter at the moment? Yes, we've got one in one of the boxes up here. If you want to have a look in, in this, in one? this one? Yep. Let's have a look. If you look in the there. Oh, there you is. See? Now, what's that? That's a brown long-eared bat. Sarah, how's it gone tonight? Oh, it was a great night. It was a full house here at City Hall. In fact, the money raised from ticket sales is about £5,000 for children in need. Some of the audience still here. Did you enjoy it? Yeah! I think that sounds like they had a good time. Now, you saw some of the acts just a second ago. They were all so good, the judges couldn't pick one winner. They picked three, and I've got them with me now. Sally and Carl from BBC Radio Humberside. Tell us, who were you this evening? I was Sarah Brightman. And I was Michael Crawford, and we did Phantom of the Opera. And how did it feel to win? Uh, just fantastic. We just had an amazing evening. That's all from Look North for now, but we are back tonight at 6.30 with a full roundup of the day's news. Make sure you join us then. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.